All right, today's lesson is going to be talking about engineering and some of the differences between engineering and science. So what you'll see popping up on the screen now is a definition for the word engineering. I believe this one is from Wikipedia. It's the word used as a noun. Uh, there's a couple other definitions up here too. It's not really important to um, have the formal definition of the word engineering, but if you look at these, the first one talks about science, skill, um, designing, uh, and understanding certain processes. The second one talks about how it's an art and how it's related to the construction of engines. We're going to get into that in just a minute. Um, if you look at this last one down here, it's, uh, it's used as a verb. So to engineer means to make cool or useful things using your brain and your hands. That's kind of the definition that I want you to focus on for this class because that's the kind of engineering we're going to be working with. All right. Uh, the history of the word engineering is actually a little bit more recent than the practice of engineering. Engineering has been around for thousands of years, ever since the first person used something to uh, improve life for either themselves or their family. They were doing early engineering. So the invention of the wheel, pulley, knife, uh, hammer, uh, chisel, any of these simple early tools were early examples of inventions, which is basically engineering. Um, engineers, as we know them today, were originally makers of war machines. The word engineer comes from the word engineer, right here, engineer, which is somebody who operated an engine. So they called them an engineer. And that started kind of just at the end of the dark ages. Um, people who were operating machines that were meant to lay siege to another, another group of people. Okay, engines were siege machine siege machines that we that were used in the act of war. So that's where the word engineer comes from. Um, here's a few examples. If you take a look at the television here, um, this is a picture of a statue of a man named Imhotep. Imhotep is generally regarded as the world's first civil engineer. He was an Egyptian engineer, and um, he worked for the pharaoh. The G Egyptians are credited with inventing um, irrigation, which is you know pulling water from a nearby river to feed the farmland nearby. So they're credited with that. Imhotep uh, created, designed, created, and built the step pyramid for pharaoh. So that's an early example of civil, civil engineering. Archimedes was uh, part of the ancient Greek culture. He is shown here. Okay. So he is arguably one of the greatest mathematicians, scientists, and engineers of all time. He invented the Archimedes screw. He came up with the principle of buoyancy. Um, he invented all kinds of siege, ma uh, siege ma machines and um, defense systems for the people that were being attacked by um, the Romans during the siege of Syracuse. So he was a, a historical figure that used his ingenuity to help defend his people all right another example of uh, renaissance engineering so the first two here were kind of ancient engineering in renaissance period after the dark ages ended um, you have one of the most important examples of engineering is the roman aqueducts okay aqueducts were these structures that directed water from natural bodies of water to places where people needed them um, cities baths uh, farmland Anywhere that the people needed the water, you could see an aqueduct directing it. And here's a picture of what the aqueducts would look like. With actually, actually, that's Galileo. We'll come back to that. Here is the aqueducts. Okay. So up on the top here would be water traveling from uh, one point to another. Uh, one level below would be water traveling to some other destination, and then so on and so forth. So you can see there's one, two, three levels. Each level directs water to a different location. Galileo often called the father of modern science, the father of modern physics, or sometimes just father of science. But the important thing is that he was the first great experimenter, uh, a lot of different inventions, and um, gave birth to the, the rise of the scientific method, basically. So he was also one of the first engineers. Um, and then, of course, modern engineering is all over the place. Two prime examples of this, um, the automobile. Auto means um, on its own, and mobile means to get around. So Automobiles were great because for the first time in history, the average person could get around by themselves. Uh, they just 
didn't need to rely on public transportation anymore, um, or horses or carriages. Uh, the internet connected the world in a way that was never seen before. A bunch of computers tied together. Information could pass back and forth. Um, it's changed the world forever, and the world is still changing today because of the invention of the internet. Okay, So there's some examples of different engineering. Moving on. Uh, if you want to be an engineer, there's all different kinds of engineering shown are just a few. You've got mechanical, electrical, chemical, nuclear, computer, civil, material. There's a whole lot more. These are just a few of them. Um, how do you know if you want to be an engineer? Well, all engineers will have um, some similarities in what they have to do to become an engineer and maybe some similar interests to, to go along with that. So this question right here, do you like solving technical problems? So here's the job description for an engineer. Are you good at science and math? Do you like to solve problems? Well, you might consider becoming an engineer. Engineers are problem solvers who use their expertise in science and math to do their job. Various branches of engineering. So here's some, some more that even I left out, aerospace, agricultural, biomedical, and so on. Here's some employment facts. Um, in the year 2008, there was about 1.6 million engineers and that number is steadily growing. Here it breaks it down into how many engineers there were in each category, but the projection for engineers is good. There's going to be more and more engineers in the years coming up. Uh, you need a bachelor's degree, which is a four-year degree, and that's what most engineers will get. Um, once you get your degree, you can typically find a job pretty quickly because of the availability of such work. Um, there are other requirements. Uh, a lot of times you need licensure, but that can often be paid for by your employer. Okay, so down here it talks about job outlook for engineers. Two of the fastest growing areas in engineering right now, biomedical and environmental engineering. Okay, this is the part we all want to learn about. How much do engineers make? Okay, so if you look at these salaries right here, electrical engineer, median annual earnings. So that's a little bit different than average, but it's a statistic that talks about, you know, halfway between the high and the low in a list of numbers. So electrical engineers, the median earnings is about $83,000 a year. And you can see that um, there isn't really a, a field in engineering that isn't well paid according to these statistics right here. Okay. All right. So uh, there's another link right here. I'll post this PowerPoint on my website. You can click on this and do a little more research, but I just showed you engineering salaries. So we're going to move on again. Now here's a little flow chart that shows you the scientific method, which we already talked about or we're going to talk about in lab one. Uh, so you define the problem, you do a little bit of research, form a hypothesis, and then you test that hypothesis by conducting an experiment. You uh, analyze your results and you report a conclusion. If you look over to the right here, the engineering process has a lot of similarities. So you start with a problem. Uh, brainstorming is very similar to research. Instead of uh, coming up with a hypothesis to solve the problem, you're going to do a design to produce a product. So the main difference between engineering and science is that engineering's goal is to produce a product, something that will actually uh, physically solve a problem. And uh, the process for step four here is that you would build it, test it, and evaluate any strengths and weaknesses it may or may not have. Typically, you're going to redesign it and build it again. And this part right here, where it goes build, test, redesign, build, that's called iteration. And often there's many iterations before the problem is solved to the uh, customer's satisfaction. When you get to where you want to be, one major part of engineering is sharing the solution. Okay. All right, so here's another flow chart that just kind of shows some of the differences between science and engineering. So science is an inquiry process. It's looking for why. It's looking for truth. It's looking for um, meaning in the natural world. So we do science. Uh, the process that we use to do science is an inquiry process. It's asking questions, looking for answers. The reason we typically will do pure science is to explain things that we see in the world around us, explain phenomenon, and we explain them using theories. Well, engineering is, is similar, but there are some differences. Instead of it being uh, an inquiry process, it's more of a design process, more of a trial and error type process. And the main goal of engineering is to produce some type of solution, some type of product or process that makes the world a better or easier place. Um, and what we notice is that there's back and forth influences between science and engineering. So 
as technology develops, it actually influences the types of scientific inquiries we're able to do. Uh, the more we learn about science, we actually learn that there are different things we can create using the science that we've learned. Okay, so these two definitely feed off each other and work together. Uh, just to reiterate, the steps of the engineering process, you start with a problem, you brainstorm, you design, and then the build, test, redesign iterations until you get what you want, and when you're done, you share the solution. That is the end of the notes for today.